Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood. I want to talk about French drains versus yard drains, whether you need catch basins on a solid pipe, which is a yard drain, or whether you need perforated pipe and stone, which is a French drain. If you do not have any standing water in your yard, then you just need a French drain. If you have standing water, well then put some inlet basins in with a solid pipe and drain it. While you're doing that, it's probably not a bad idea to put in a French drain too because you already have an open trench. So you might as well put a perforated pipe next to a solid pipe. Now in this case, we have no standing water. This yard is probably fed by a spring. The entire yard is really, really soft. The whole neighborhood is built up on higher ground. This is the lowest point of this lot and the neighborhood slowly works its way towards the lake where all the water drains. We're gonna put in parallel French drains. We have five of them running one direction, three of them running in the other direction. This is the only way to tighten up a yard that doesn't have a low spot that is your troubled spot. When you have a yard where the entire thing is saturated, we refer to this as a French drain grid. We grid the yard. We go ahead and we basically tile the yard. There is over 400 feet of French drain in this backyard. There's over 1,200 feet of perforated pipe throughout this system. We're going to give this water that's in the ground a place to go. When the groundwater hits the veins of stone, it's going to take in all that water. All this water that's trapped in this yard. And this yard has good slope. So this isn't just a bunch of surface water that's not draining. The surface water does run off. During a hard rain, this yard has so much slope it has good runoff, but because there's so much groundwater, this yard is always soaking wet. It's always soft. It's basically unusable. Throughout a drought, this yard is really super saturated. So that's why we know there's a spring feeding the problem that this yard is having with drying out. We're going to give that water a place to go. When it hits the veins of stone, it's going to fill the voids of the stone, and it's going to find its way to the void of the pipe. Now, we have three perforated pipes in each trench. We have the two at the bottom and one on top. We're trying to create as much void as we possibly can. We want to create as much air as we possibly can. The water is going to fill any void, and it's going to drain. The slope that is on the yard is on the system. We didn't have to build it with any slope. The yard has slope. So it's going to drain down to our discharge line that runs to the lake, but we are removing all the dirt. We're not going to put any of the dirt back because we want the water to find the voids. We want the water to be able to run through the voids of the stone into the pipe. You can see how we connected the pipe. It's okay to use T's in a French drain system. Unless you're downstream in a French drain system where you know you're already moving a ton of water, you're all right to use a T. This is a low volume system. At the discharge end, it's gonna be running about four gallons per minute to drain this yard. You can see all that water after we dug out the trench, you can see all that water that was at the bottom of the trench. It's already filling into that trench. So if we put two pipes on the bottom, we're gonna let that water fill the voids inside the pipe and it's gonna travel through the pipe. This is why water can't find its way out even when there's slope. It's down in the soil. It's down in the soil, and unless there's a vein of gravel or a vein of sand, something that the water can travel through, it's just going to keep the yard super saturated. You need to give the water a place to go. You have to use a drainage fabric, a non-woven geotextile, double-punched, purpose-built drainage fabric to keep the dirt from filling the voids of the stone. You don't want your drain to be plugged. If the stone has dirt migrating through all the void. How are you going to get the water to the pipe? So that's why we use the double-punched, non-woven geotextile filter fabric. You can see the connections. The guys just cut out a piece of pipe. Go ahead, put your fitting on, whether it's a T, whether it's a Y. It doesn't matter if it's a French drain grid. It's going to be pretty low volume. Once you grid an entire yard, that's going to be a low volume system. You're not running all the water from the yard through just one French drain pipe and one French drain trench. So it's going to be low volume. 
You're not going to need to use Y fittings like we do in downspouts. Of course, if you have a French drain that's coming in on an angle, a Y fitting is going to work really well for you. Now remember, the bigger the void, the better the French drain. So we use an inch and a half round rock for our gravel. It's cleaned, it's washed, it's screened. It doesn't have a bunch of dirt or fines to fill the voids and plug the system. This is really important. Also, round rock doesn't compact. And when you have round rock, if you can picture two round objects touching one another, you have very minimal surface contact and a lot of void in between. So that's why we do not recommend and we do not use a crushed aggregate. If you live in a place where round rock is not obtainable or is not affordable, then just go to inch and a half crushed that's screened and washed. But we really, really strongly encourage that you use a bigger aggregate. Now, if you go beyond an inch and a half, it'll feel like you're walking on golf balls. And trust me, we're the guys that are always pushing it. We're pushing it. We want our systems to work better and better and better, and we've tried it. So that's why we go up to an inch and a half round rock. That's the very best. It gives you great performance. It's really practical, and you can walk on it. It's soft as you walk across your yard. If you do not have a sprinkler system, you're going to want to take your sod off with four inches of root and dirt. You can see the men removed this turf grass and they kept four inches of dirt on the backing. This is really important if you do not have a sprinkler system. You're going to want that extra dirt on your turf so that you don't dry your lawn out. If you do not have an irrigation system, you will see where each French drain line is come your drought season. One of the most common questions is how far do you space the French drains apart? In really large yards, we're typically between 15 and 20 feet apart. In small urban settings, we're typically around 7 feet apart. We're never ever any closer than that because there's no need for it. You can pull through clay. You can pull water 3.5 feet with one French drain. So you don't need to ever be any closer than 7 feet. But if you have a large yard... You have to be realistic. And in most cases, a large yard will be 15 to 20 feet spacing between your French drain, parallel French drain lines. Now, what's nice about not having inlet basins on your French drain is you're not going to end up with any contamination in the system. If you put catch basins on a perforated pipe, you're going to bring in contamination and it's going to fill those perforations if you found any of this information helpful give us a thumbs up it supports our channel and if you have any questions about a french drain grid or putting in a french drain field leave them in the comments section